Welcome to Answers in First Enoch, episode 17. We are continuing with geography as Enoch affirms his previous chapters throughout. The only way anyone could attempt any other, other view, really, when you look at all of Enoch in context, well, would be to ignore most of Enoch's content uh, reading in fragments. That would be the only way uh, that someone could really misunderstand this. Uh, because Enoch is really clear, and really the rest of Scripture is too, when you put it all together in context, which is what we do. This will be a short one, but we don't want to mix up topics here, and this is equally important, however. At this point in the earlier chapters, Enoch well defined the shape of the earth as a flat, round disk. He located the North Pole in Mount Zion, uh, which we are about to get back to. Uh, he visited Mount Sinai and tracked all the way to the Garden of Eden in the Far East in the Philippines, really defining the locations, exactly, of Yahuwah's four holy places on earth. Really, Jubilees and Enoch go hand in hand. He then defines the edge of the earth we covered, which must be an edge, because he goes to the end in four different directions. So he's telling you that the earth has an edge um, around it, that it is a flat, round disk on the surface, uh, of course. That's not the complete cosmology, but that's the surface. In this video, Enoch will break the earth down now into four quarters which truly specifies the same cosmology we have been discussing. Then in the next video, Enoch locates what he calls the seven antediluvian rivers, which we will compare to the five rivers from Eden, both from creation. They're describing the same system here in five, seven, not a huge difference, really. Uh, but Enoch's descriptions of these seven rivers really fit those of the five. Uh, you're going to find these are the same. But let's dive in. Open your book of First Enoch to chapter 77, beginning in verse 1. This is part A. And the first quarter is called the East because it is the first. Now, once again, Enoch is drawing from the context in which he has already well defined. Uh, some try to read something like this and forget such context, which makes no sense. So we map the East with this full context of the rest of the description here, uh, which you'll see will make sense as we go to the other quarters. You will see why um, the East is cut off where it is, but this is essentially the East. And again, we'll explain this as we go. Uh, it will make perfect sense. Part B, verse 1, and the second, the south, because the Most High will descend there. Now that's interesting. We'll talk about that. Yea, there in quite a special sense will he who is blessed forever descend. That's Yahuwah. Now what is the perspective of Enoch here? Well, the world has an edge, an ice shelf, if you will, uh, in which the firmament fastens he said last video uh, twice, but also defined it as having an edge in the four different directions. This is fitting to everything we have covered thus far, and it's in the south of the whole, you go all the way around, it's still south. You're still south no matter where you go around that ring. This is Antarctica. There is no possibility in Enoch's observation for a ball, nor a south pole, nor can Antarctica be the shape that we're shown today, which again is just a computer rendering. That doesn't make it true. Uh, Enoch, however, is proven to be true. Of course, the Earth only has a North Pole. It doesn't have a South Pole. Uh, it doesn't work. Take a compass and go to Argentina, for instance, uh, even Australia, other parts uh, that are down under, per se. Uh, where you take your compass and you'll see it defaults uh, to magnetic north as the North Pole overpowers. If there was a South Pole, it uh, is nowhere near as magnetized. And again, looks like fiction. 
Antonio Pigafetta actually recorded that in his journal when Magellan was crossing the southern strait of South America into the Pacific. So this is actually fact, uh, even recorded in history. What else do we know about this ring or wall around the Earth? Well, it is land um, as well, but not uh, only that sailors do not fall off, that's for sure. Uh, no sailor ever believed they would fall off the edge of the earth. That's ridiculous. Um, but this is also where Yahuwah descends. Wow. Uh, understand this means that no modern man can be there, at least not close to the area where he descends. Uh, if they were, they would die in their sin in his presence, at least at that time. But the point is, no one inhabits uh, that area. We've seen pictures and even a computer animation, even from NASA, uh, of par portions of Antarctica, but much is missing and much details missing and on purpose. At this point, it should be fully uh, cataloged and, and everything, but it's not. Um, you know, NASA, basically giving us a satellite photo, especially since these pieces, you know, of trash that they supposedly put into space that they call satellites, uh, somehow miraculously travel at 18,000 miles per hour without falling apart, yet they're made of nothing, practically. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't work. We don't have such technology. It doesn't exist. There are no satellites, or you'd see them between the moon, right? Because isn't the moon 200,000 miles away or more? More, actually, right. Uh, uh, ever seen a satellite pass in between at 18,000 miles per hour? It would be a blur, but uh, even with a telescope, no one sees that, do they? No, because it doesn't happen. Verse 2, and the west quarter is named the diminished because, this is neat, there... All the luminaries of the heaven wane and go down. So it's where what? The sun sets. Now, we are about to cover this soon in very great detail. Uh, you can go to chapter 72 of the book and you can see our different charts of the sun's course. Um, but uh, very clearly, the sun rises in portals in the east, the far east. East, specifically near the Philippines, in fact, and Japan, uh, general area. And it sets in the Pacific in portals there somewhere uh, where they are specifically called the West Gates for the sun and the moon and luminaries to wax and wane. There's really no question where this is. It can't be in the East. It can't be uh, anywhere but in the western uh, part of the world where those gates are located. And Enoch pretty much does that uh, in uh, chapter 72, but even some other places. Uh, we're going to get there in more detail, but there you go. Verse 3, And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. So the north is the middle or center or navel of the earth, and then it comes down further, of course, uh, in Enoch's perspective. This is very clear, as well as Jubilees and the whole of Scripture, really. The first of them is for the dwelling of men. We know that most men live where? On the continents. Um, it's pretty clear, pretty easy. And again, the population in the north, um, as far as uh, Asia, uh, Europe, uh, even northern Africa, and because Egypt is a large place, um, and uh, the Middle East, uh, North America, etc., etc., etc. So, uh, no doubt there is uh, certainly something to that. So, that's where men dwell um, on land, basically. Uh, and what was land before the flood? Well, it was also the bottom of the ocean floor, which was dry land prior to to the flood. We're going to cover that a little bit more in the next video, so I'm not going to go into that much here, but we'll affirm that. Watch our Rivers from Eden series if you really want to, because we cover mega scripture on that, and it's very clear the Bible leads to exactly that. And the second contains seas of water. Uh, the Hebrew word yam, seas, interpreted, uh, is also used for the Nile yam, or river, as well as the Dead Yom, 
or the dead lake, really, because it's not even a sea uh, in terms of everything else. Um, these are basically essentially the lakes, which are extremely large, by the way. Today, on the bottom of the ocean floor, they are called basins or bays, even. Those were the pre flood lakes. And the abysses, the great deep known as the oceanic ridge trenches from uh, and trenches from where the flood erupted, according to Genesis. And again, we cover that in our Rivers from Eden series in great detail. Not going to recover that here. And forests, including on the ocean floor, by the way, before the flood. Yes, trees grew there. Uh, and rivers, uh, rivers from Eden specifically. And uh, what we will cover in the next video, Enoch defines it as seven antediluvian rivers. Five, seven pretty much same thing uh, already, even in language, but you're going to find Enoch just splits uh, the main river a couple of times, and that's how he gets to seven. And darkness and clouds, and the third part contains the Garden of Righteousness. So we know it goes from the middle of the earth, the North Pole, okay, in the north, uh, down to where the Garden of Eden is, and that's why we draw the circle the way that we do. So the southern point of this northern quarter is the Philippines. This makes sense as Noah uses it as well as Shem's border. How about that? Um, these are not difficult to ascertain with the proper perspective. That's really what we've brought to a lot of these topics. And that perspective comes from viewing the Bible as our foundation and seeing it as truth. We believe the Bible. And it tests as truth. And that's for certain. Uh, this really only works properly on a flat surface uh, map of a round disk. Though you could force it onto a globe in this instance. But everything else that Enoch says is very clear. He doesn't see a ball. That's for sure. Verse 4. And I saw seven high mountains. Now this is fascinating. Higher than all the mountains which are on the earth. What would that be? I'm not talking about Mount Everest here, folks. This is talking about continents, which before the flood were mountains, mega mountains. Think about Australia as a mountain with dry land all the way down to the ocean floor. Wow. I would be massive, right? And it was. Uh, imagine Asia as a mountain. Wow. Uh, that's all I can say. Uh, there was no world ocean yet, so that's fact. These are the seven continents of the earth, of course, which Enoch knew, even in his time, all surrounded by water now, for the most part today. Uh, but yes, though it serves as the ring around the earth, Antarctica is still land and still a continent by definition in either cosmology. You don't dismiss that because it is. Enoch went there, so he knew this. And thence comes forth hoarfrost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. As promised, a quick one. So Enoch just confirmed the shape of the earth again, really, just as he already defined the earth has an edge in each direction. Enoch was aware of the Americas before the flood, so no one needed to wait for Columbus to discover them. Oh, wait, there were already people living there, so he didn't discover anything anyway. Duh. Uh, this geography is largely confirmed in Noah's division of the earth we map out in the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, as well as in our completed 52-week uh, series now, uh, Answers in Jubilees. He uses Enoch's geography, and that proves the earth did not change in terms of the location of the garden. There you go, which Noah still mapped after the flood in the very same place as Enoch. His directions are very clear. Those claiming everything moved around the earth are really placating scientism uh, and a hydroplate theory. That is bad theory. It doesn't happen because plates don't float on magma, nor water for that matter. The earth is connected on foundations. That's what the Bible says, and that's what we observe. Yes, we've gone all the way down to the bottom of Marianas Trench, and what did we see there? 
it's connected. It has hydrothermal vents uh, in which water is coming up, warm water uh, with salt. Salt's being injected, but what is it? It's connected. So, uh, again, watch where did Noah's Ark land. We cover that in detail there as well. Uh, this is why David said the Earth's foundation is immovable. And it's pretty clear. Uh, we all know what that means. Uh, and Moses says we have ancient mountains, meaning the pre-flood mountains, uh, long before its time. But he was much closer than we are to that. And lasting hills, he calls them, meaning the same from before the flood. This is the cosmology of the earth in all of Scripture, which Enoch and Moses' writings serve as the entire foundation. It is time we restore first Enoch and Jubilees to their rightful places as inspired Scripture, as the second and third witnesses of creation and the flood. Yes, two of the most critical issues today which are causing people to stumble away from Yahusha and what is the church doing well it doesn't believe the Bible in those accounts it just go read what scholars say most of them don't believe in creation or the flood as it is written um, they don't know these narratives either some are still saying that the earth flooded in 40 days and 40 nights they can't even read a few sentences further where it's very clear that the earth is flooded for 150 days and then it takes another 150 days so that's five months five months that's 10 months right there in order for it to dry so you know you got almost a year process there not 40 days it's just nonsense but even scientists are getting those narratives from stupid scholars like that. And they just need to grow up and learn, really. So, basically, um, they're censoring these second and third witnesses. That's the problem. That's the root of it. No wonder 2 Peter 3 warns this foundation would be under attack in our time. Yeah, he must have realized his scripture would be censored. Uh, it certainly is. We have this... Uh, very clearly defined in the series so far but really if you go through our channel and start watching from solomon's gold series to the flood series to the lost tribe series to the original canon series including the sabbath series i mean we've proven all of this so basically it serves as affirmation of what enoch has really been describing all along there you have it we have over 400 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound, with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. And then when YouTube fails to notify you, make sure that you go on to our website, thegodculture.com, and just fill in the pop-up there with your email, and we'll notify you ourselves. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon, and our new podcast is also available for all of our videos as well. All links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative to Facebook, we now have Parlor link below. We now have six books published internationally being read in over 100 countries with our newest release, The First Book of Enoch, the oldest book in history. And yes, we prove it. Read the introduction. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., many overseas markets on Amazon, and it is available in hardcover or softcover, both just color available there for that. Uh, additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interior, as so many had requested that overseas, uh, and we already have that in the Philippines, so uh, we didn't need that here. However, that's available in hardcover color or softcover color, or still the black and white option is there. And the same goes for the Book of Enoch, available in all three formats, uh, if you wish, whichever. However, all of our books, including Solomon's Treasure, are free in ebook. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. 
Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. Thank you.